I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, and uh, before we start, I just want to take a moment to explain that the format of our presentation is slightly different from the ones that were done earlier. What we have here is, since it's a technical approach, so we'll be walking through you why this particular approach is needed. And we'll also walk you through some demo, and we'll show you some code on how that can be achieved. So we'll just take a moment to screen to come up. Today is how you can use your skill set as a web developer to target multiple platforms. It's not just about targeting only Android, not just targeting only iOS, but definitely more than that. You can even target other platforms like BlackBerry and Windows Phone. For the purpose of this talk, since uh, iPhone and Android, these are two most commonly used platforms, we'll be focusing our talk only on that. But the same approach that we are going to present, that can be easily extended over to other platforms like BlackBerry and Windows Phone. One other thing I'd like to talk about is that uh, since this is a developer-oriented session, and as a developer, whenever I am attending some sessions, I do get some questions. So if you have questions, you may ask when you have that. Or if you can hold it, then we have a dedicated time slot, say five minutes at the end of our presentation, where we take up all the question and answer that you might have. But if there's anything burning, you may ask anytime you wish to. Just bear with us for a moment. I need to some problems, but we are good to go now. So I'll just take the clicker. So we welcome you to the cross platform development approach that we are going to present. I'll be talking through why this approach is needed in the first place, and as a developer or as an organization, how this can benefit you and your clients. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is what are the stats around the growth of smartphones? Maybe not all of you know that the first ever smartphone that was launched was named Simon. Coincidentally, it shares the name with one of our presenters. So in 1992, IBM launched this phone, which was more of a PDA combined with a cellular phone. It had the capabilities of emails, fax, and besides the standard functions that a phone has of calling and SMS. It also had one thing which is prevalent even today, apps. It had apps like Notes. It had apps like Calculator. Of course, th back then there was no concept of App Store. Things kept on going. There were lots of devices introduced with some extensions on the similar platform. Some were from BlackBerry, some were from Nokia. And then what revolutionized this was the iPhone. In 2007, iPhone was launched. But iPhone as a device, a great hardware, a superb device, it couldn't have done much without need for an app store. It was the app store that made the iPhone what it is today. And for that matter, even Android. Think of this, what if you have a very good phone? It has calculator, it has notes, those basic functions. But all you can do is that make a call and send some messages. Having an iPhone store, something like what Apple did in 2008, it allowed users to extend the applications or the, their device to, say, infinite possibilities. Now a user could do what they wanted to do, not what they were sort of tied with using the device that they are purchased or they are using. If I, whatever reason, like Simon was talking about, he is a avid sportsman, I guess. He, goes for jogging, cycling. Now, as an athletic person, I'd like to have an application that keeps a track of my day-to-day -day exercise. I want to see how much calories did I burn. I want to see what's my progress. I maybe also want to, say, tally it against my friends. All these things are possible only with apps. That's why when, in 2008, Apple launched iTunes Store, it was launched with mere 500 apps. But recently, it has crossed over half a million mark. Maybe in a couple of more years, it will be over one million. Google definitely wasn't far behind. In 2008, Google launched Android phone. It also took the world by storm in the sense what was different in Google than iPhone was that iPhone was just one device tied with one particular manufacturer, Apple. They had their own price bands, 
which was definitely not within reach of everyone. But Android, being an open platform, it allowed all the different manufacturers like HTC, Motorola, and others to jump into that, write their own native UI over it, just skin it the way they want, and provide a phone that is as good as an iPhone to a mass number of people. Why Android was able to target more people? Because the devices that it can run on wasn't limited, neither by manufacturer, nor by price band, nor by hardware capabilities. So definitely, there was an Android iPhone, oh, sorry, Android phone for everyone. Similarly, even Google realized that the way what iPhone has done by launching iTunes Store to popularize the apps and in turn the devices, it also launched Google App Market, which is now known as Play. Now, why these things are important? As a developer, a device, a mobile device, as we all know, these are catching over. We have seen stats where we know that there will be a time soon enough when these things, these devices, will surpass the PC, the desktop that you use at your home or office. But as a developer, what does it mean to you? As a developer, it means that definitely there will be more people inclined towards using these devices. What today I do on my desktop PC, on web, I might want to do that on a device. When I'm on, on maybe let's say I'm, uh, I'm a traveler. I, because of my job, I have to travel a lot. Now, what is something which I can use a lot? Something like a ticket booking thing. Now, typically ticket booking sites are earlier used to be only on web. That means the only mechanism you could access them was through your desktop PC. Now, when I'm on run, definitely it's difficult for me to find a PC. For me, what would be easier is an app that resides on the phone. My phone is obviously connected to internet, and I can do my booking, change my booking, check the status of my bookings, whatever I need before I actually land to the place where I'm going. Moving further, as we talked about, this brings us to the phenomenal category of native app development. We talked about that these iTunes store, Google store, they have tons of applications. But us developers are all only developing it. There are some from, say, independent developers, an individual who's working as a developer. Then there are some from organization, and then there are some which are more like, say, a B2C kind of applications. Like I was giving an example of a ticketing service. Let's say I am a train ticketing provider. It could be like, an example could be a clear trip. So I'm something of that sort. And I want to reach all my customers, or most of my customers, even the ones who are on the run, who cannot afford, or who cannot afford the time uh, to go to a PC or maybe find a cyber cafe or do whatever. For us, it was like, OK, native app development is the way to go. Now, native app development, whenever you are developing, it has lots of benefits and great benefits. The first is that it is the best possible user experience that a user can get on the device. Since you are using a native platform, what it does is that it is optimized for that particular device. The iPhone SDK is optimized for iPhone, and similarly, Android is for Android phones. They are able to take all the juices out of the hardware, the device that it is running, the processor architecture, everything. Also, since this is designed for a particular device, it provides you certain three things, like maybe if you are an iOS developer, you would be knowing about that default theming, styling, something like navigation bar. Those things, whatever you have, those sort of comes for free. You don't have to go much on it. Those things are a great thing, and provided only by the native applications. But native applications are maybe only good if you are targeting just one platform. What if you are targeting more than one platform? Normally, like I talked about earlier, that Google and iPhone both are, say, very widely used. Now we see that Android is already taking over the iPhone. So as a developer, as an organization, I definitely would want to target at least these two platforms to start with. So we start running into some kind of challenges when we are following a native approach, but building for multiple platforms. The first challenge as a developer or as an organization is that you need specialized skills set. The technology that we use for developing iPhone apps is very different from what we use for Android apps. 
the internal architecture is different, the language itself is different. And there might not be or there won't be many developers who are, say, expert in both these technologies. There definitely would be some. But then, not everyone is comfortable with this. And maybe I only, for whatever reason, I only want to work on iPhone. I do have some background on web development. Now that I am working on native, I am interested only on iPhone. Then there is other thing which is called feature parity. Since we talked about that, there possibly would be two different teams working for the same organization, working on the same application, but developing applications for two different platforms. One is working for iOS, another is working for Android. Now, not all times it will happen that both these teams are in sync in terms of the feature they have developed up till a point in time. It is very much likely that one team has developed more feature than the other. So we see that the features that are available on one particular platform are out of sync with the ones that are available on the other. Similarly, since we have two different code bases, it becomes relatively more difficult to maintain that code and also extend that code. There will be a time when you have bugs. There could be a time when you have a change request. There could be a time when a new feature is introduced. Now you have to do both things, possibly in a similar way, just in a different syntax targeting two different platforms. And then, since you are supporting two teams, definitely the development cost arises. Now, before we go into how we can, say, make use of, say, commonality between these platforms to work out a approach that can be targeted alike on both these platforms, let's look at the composition of an app. A typical mobile app will constitute of a UI. Now, UI is something which could be different on Android and iPhone. In most cases, applications coming from same vendor do have different styling for these things. It is very much like that if I'm using an iPhone, then I know how typical iPhone apps work. So the app that is being developed by a new vendor will be inclined or will be styled according to native applications already available on iOS. And also, like I talked about earlier, that there are certain components which comes for free from using a native SDK. Those automatically takes care of styling the app for one particular platform. Another thing that you have is application logic that sits within your app. What this means is that typically it would not be a business logic kind of thing, because that is something you'd like to store elsewhere. But whatever logic you have for navigation, whatever you ha logic you have for validations kind of stuff, anything that has to do with presentation, those things will definitely be part of your native code. Then there could be, in most cases, a database. Now the database is something which we have like SQLite, which is common on both iOS and Android. The ways or the mechanism to access the database, use it, it is different. But definitely, as a database component, this is something which can be shared. And the biggest thing here, which is not part of your app application, but providing you the core business logic, is a web service. In a typical enterprise application, something like which has an enterprise which already has a website, now they have started to move into the mobile vision, and they are using a mobile app which is sort of doing the same thing which your website was doing. Taking the same example of a ticket booking site, we already had a site which was used to book tickets. Now we decide that we want to enter the mobile arena. Now what do we do? We definitely won't be writing the entire code from scratch. The core business logic for accessing services, accessing database, everything has to be shared between web service, uh, website and the mobile devices. So for that, there will be a web service which will be providing you the cool business logic. Now, of all these components that we discussed, web service, we already see that this is something which is shared across different devices or different platforms. By platforms, I'll say a web platform and a native device. Local store is something which, again, you can share. You could have a same SQL-like database structurally, which is used on your Android phone and your iPhone. Application logic is something which cannot be shared or cannot be shared that easily. 
UI, like we talked about, UI is styled differently for different devices. In certain cases, like for example, Facebook, the UI could be same. What you see on the web is same. What you see on Android is same as what you see on iPhone. But that is an exception. In most cases, there will be some subtle differences, some style, something which is different on one device running, say, iOS, from another device running Android. But the crux here is the core logic that we talk about. There could be lots of variational logic that you have in a typical say business application, an enterprise application like ticketing. There could be flows where user is logged in, you take one flow. User is not logged in, you take another flow. User has some specific settings. Based on that, you could have another navigation flow. You could be asking his preferences, or you might not be asking for his preferences. So those kind of things constitutes of the business logic, all the presentation logic that resides on the phone in that code. Now, how about or how good would it be if we can somehow write this logic only once? The navigation, the presentation, the validation, everything. I write that code only once. And that somehow works on all the devices, all the different platforms that I'm targeting. Taking an example, how do we bridge this gap? Let's say you already have an application which is written in iOS and Android. Like I said, it must be having some code for presentation, for navigation, some minor validation that again for iOS is written in Objective-C and for Android is written in Java. Now, what we talked about, let's move this logic to something which is sort of understandable by both these platforms. One thing which came up early in one of the presentations was one thing which can be somehow run on different devices without any sort of problems is JavaScript. So what we are proposing here is that we move the entire logic of presentation and validation, everything into JavaScript. Now, of course, JavaScript is not something which is natively understood by iOS or Android, or for that matter, Blackberry or even Windows Phone. So you do need something to bridge that gap. Now, what bridge could it be? You could have another thing, again written in JavaScript, which we are here depicting as bridge. There are frameworks available for different platforms. One is Rhino service that is available for Android. What it allows you to do is that it allows you to marshal objects from JavaScript to Java and back, and also allows you to make calls from one area, say JavaScript, to Java. You could invoke functions both ways. You can pass objects both ways. Similarly, for iOS, there is something called as JS Cocoa. So JS Cocoa is also a framework that provides the same thing that Rhino Service does for Android. So having that framework embedded in our code, we can write a script, we can write some code, which is just about passing objects and just about making the server calls or the making the core native calls to JavaScript. Now, one thing which we see here is that although for Android and iPhone, JavaScript is not something which is understood natively, but there is another platform for which JavaScript is native, and that is web. Now, since you are already developing something which is targeted to mobile devices, which is taking care of all your presentation logic, all your navigation, and your validation, you could extend the same thing to work with your mobile website. So what this means is that if you are developing for, say, Android and iOS, you sort of get your mobile device for free. It's not entirely free. You will have to do certain stuff, which we'll cover later in demo. But definitely, a bigger chunk, whatever thing we were talking about earlier, that the core logic that can be extracted out is shared across all three platforms. Now, definitely, this will 
help you minimize your cost, minimize your effort, everything based on how many platforms you are targeting or how much code you are actually moving to your JavaScript code. So this is theory, definitely. Maybe makes sense, maybe it doesn't make sense. But we can have a demo here, which uh, my colleague Abhinav will be presenting, and we'll show you how these things work. OK. Uh, Rajdeep talked about uh, how we can port uh, this platform so that we run JavaScript. And we run it in a way, in a in a in something embedded in something, have a native UI so that your application logic remains the same, and you can actually uh, use the same application logic to drive multiple applications. Uh, one of uh, the first example, obviously, he took was of Android. So I think uh, it would be fair to start with Android here. For this purpose of this demo, what I've done is I've created a very simple Android app which uh, runs on the framework that Rajdeep has to uh, talk to you about. I'll first uh, demo the app and uh, then I'll take you back to the code and show you what is happening. So let's say I have a native app which does something very simple. It just has to uh, multiply two numbers. So uh, I think my mouse has kind of frozen here. Anyways, I'll show you the web version of that. So let's say I have a very simple uh, app which has to multiply two numbers. You have a UI here. You have uh, a pop-up which comes and tells you that the result is 12. Uh, I want this app both in my, uh, in my website also. I want this app as a part of my Android also, but with a native UI. And I want this in iOS also. So what I do is that I embed my code <coughs> in JavaScript. Here it is in uh, CoffeeScript, which is a wrapper over JavaScript. Uh, so essentially, this compiles into JavaScript. I have uh, two numbers which I multiply, uh, and I get a result. So uh, if you have if you have one logic which is controlling, which is ported to all three platforms, and you want to change this logic, let's say instead of multiply, I want to say divide. All I have to do is I have to change one side. I have to build my website. I think there is something messed up, but yeah, let me just try it. And this changes to divide. Let me see if uh, my Droid emulator has started responding. So I'll show you the same thing there. As an extension of what I was saying is, if you have a native Droid app with a native <coughs> UI, and then you later decide, okay, I don't even want the native UI. I want to replace the UI with a web-based version of the same thing. So I can actually port the same UI here. And I think with the uh, slide presentation on my emulators, for some reason, are not responding. So let me just see if it works. Actually, started responding now. So let me. dive into some code. So as Rajdeep said, we have a common component which we've used for which you we've used controller MVC architecture. If you don't want to use it, you can do it anyway. But you write your code in uh, JavaScript and then you have a bridge layer which can actually port this to either your native device or your web or native iOS, native Android or web. So what do we do? We write a bridge file. This is my droid bridge. Uh, if you look at it carefully, there are things like alert, 
there are things like change page. For change page, what I am doing here is I am calling a native class called page registry and I am saying change page. For alert, I am saying page registry dot change page. Uh, my Rhino, with my Rhino, I can actually bind Java objects. Uh, Rhino is a JavaScript interpreter in Java. So that will act that Java uh, and that Java class will internally call the UI and or or perform the actions as written here. As far as web is concerned, all this comes for free because in web can uh, inherently understand JavaScript. So if I look at my web bridge and if I try to look for uh, any of these uh, methods, so it, this guy is just uh, tinkering with the history and this guy just triggers an event and that opens a page. So this is how the bridge thing works. Let me take you to how uh, the native code will look like for uh, such a bridge. So if you remember, there was a class referred to called page registry. In my page registry, what I will do is, if I want to uh, change a page, I say, I fire that uh, Android intent. So this way, my bridge is completely set up. And tomorrow, if I have to perform any kind of application logic, which I want to port to all my uh, native devices, two, three, and along with the web, then what I can do is I can just I can just make one change and it gets ported to all the devices. So your division multiplication changes to division in Android also, web also. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, the whole logic of the whole uh, approach Rajdeep was present talking about. Uh, before moving forward, if you guys have any questions related to what we are uh, trying to demo, it would be good so that we can then go forward and tell you what we've tried to do. Yes, please. Yeah, my question is architecture itself in our bridge so that we write our application for HTML and straight away works in all the platform. Uh, actually, that is a way. The problem, the problem there is the bottleneck is what if you want a very responsive UI page? Or what if you are stuck somewhere and you realize that, okay, this cannot be done in an HTML based UI because there are so many things on the device which you, for which you have to end of the day go native, you cannot do it on the web. So having a loosely coupled bridge, what that gives you is that that gives you uh, the ability to actually switch from uh, web to native also, even if, uh, but if you want to stay on the web, so this framework that Rajdeep and I were trying. We've, we've uh, incorporated a custom web component so that if we want, we can render HTML pages, but that is not the basic aim. The basic aim is to couple it so loosely that you can embed your common logic in one component, but if you want, keep your UI separate. If you want, just embed HTML. So you just need to write a web view or a web view controller in iOS. So, so one another thing is uh, to highlight here is that, uh, as we showed in presentation, web part of the application came as sort of a byproduct of the approach that you are following. There could be possibilities, there could be things that you are maybe targeting only devices, or the mobile website that you have has different features than what you provide on device. So there could be that kind of dis, uh, disconnect there. So that's why, and also like uh, Abner mentioned, we want to keep the bridge as, say, sort of loosely coupled as possible so that it can easily be ported for other platforms. Like we are demoing only for Android here, but it could very well work for iOS as well. Uh, someone, yeah. Uh, allowing you to make server uh, set calls across platform. The logic or whatever we have here is could be as simple as like we showed alert. The alert that you show on a device definitely. Say if that is using a native code, you would need someone which is say has competency in Android of our iPhone, somebody who has competency in Objective C. But we are sort of minimizing. You are not writing the entire code. This example shows just a simple multiplication of two numbers. Imagine something. Uh, again, taking the same ticketing example. Before you book your ticket, you will be searching for flight results or train results. So in that case, you are not actually creating a view, you're not writing any logic on the client side 
for sorting. You are not writing any lo logic on the client side again to maybe expanding, collapsing, anything that has to do with presentation. So what we are saving on is that you do need some developers on your team who has competency with iPhone and Android development, but definitely you don't need the entire team to be good enough or competent with these technologies. This definitely does not mean that these things are going away. There are certain things which we'll talk later, but there are certain things which you cannot do with this particular approach. So this, like we also showed uh, in one of the, say, emulator, the UI that we show here is only showing the other one. The web so it is only showing the embedded web page. That is not picking the page of the net or that's not an HTML site. Uh, does that answer your question? And does your UI in HTML, you might have some kind of styling that is device specific. And you are only doing as much as, say, since you are targeting multiple platforms, these platforms, these devices have different capabilities. Just for sake of discussion, let's assume that only iPhone provides you a camera. None of the other phones, Android, Blackberry, they don't have this particular feature. Now, phone gap for the kind of platform it is, it cannot have anything which you uses camera because that is not something that is common across all the platforms. This is a key point over here that frameworks like PhoneGap, they can address only as much as the least common denominator of all the platforms that you are trying to target. Not everything. What we are proposing here, how it is different is that you can have a totally native UI. Native UI as in buttons, controls, everything is native. But the core logic that is running behind the click of the button, whatever, all those things are in JavaScript. So this particular framework is not about tying you to just use JavaScript or just use, say, web view. You can have an application which is totally has a native UI, but the core logic is totally in JavaScript. And even bigger thing, one of the things which we have experienced in our project, one of the projects that we did earlier, is what if you have a client who already has an application on Android and on iPhone, and now they want to increase the number of features that is supported by the app. Now, we are talking about mixing HTML with this particular, sorry, the native with this particular approach. You could have certain views which are in HTML. You have some logic which is native, and you have some logic which is JavaScript. So it is about mixing those things. And this thing is something which is not possible to do in a framework like PhoneGap. Uh, Rajdeep, it's Savan here. Yep. Uh, my question is, whenever I see the uh, the word cross-platform, uh, why people addresses only uh, Android and iPhone? Why not BlackBerry? So, <laughs> uh, actually, uh, so for this here we've uh, taken Android and iOS for the sake of uh, example. They are very popular. A lot of people know their SDKs, web, Android, iOS. The problem, uh, it is not as if this cannot be done on other platforms, but just for the sake of example, we've taken those. Yeah. Uh, we'll take other questions offline because uh, we have uh, some 10, 15 minutes left. So I think we can continue with our presentation. Yes, good. Uh, two months back, I used PhoneGap. And <coughs> midway into the project, I found out that uh, the bigger the data is, uh, the slower the UI responds to. Like I wanted to load, let's say, all my contacts in the list. So it was about around 300 contacts. And I saw that <coughs> my screen was not at all responding at all. And what it made me was I done phone back and switched back to my native, which I know very well. So I went back to native application development. So how does this, this tool actually, when, when I searched for the reasons why it happened, so I figured out it's not actually a problem the phone gave or something. It's because of the browsers are very slow. Yes. Now, how does your, your tool address this particular case? Because I have to work around design, which means I have to spend additional time uh, <coughs> if I'm doing cross-platform development. Sure. And does your tool address this? Yes, it does. And in fact, uh, why this tool or this framework came into being is about addressing these problems. The same thing that you're talking about is what posts or Facebook. Facebook also had a very long scrolling, say, comments section that slowed the application down. Now, what again is different here is that 
let's assume that you are using this framework. You have gone with the approach of using a HTML UI that is again embedded in the native view on your native application. The same thing that I was talking about earlier. So let's say we run into the same kind of problem. Now we already discussed that the core logic that we have is in JavaScript. But the problem, like he mentioned, it is not about the logic. It is the inherent problem with the web view on a particular device. Now what you can do about it? Since you are not tied here with using only HTML views, you can totally get rid of that particular view. Just write a native view, bind the content or the data that you were earlier binding with the HTML page to the native page. It is not that the code that is running in the background is JavaScript that is slowing down or that will later on slow it down. It is the view, the UI that is not responsive. And if you remember what we were discussing earlier was we are talking, or initially we were talking only of extracting the core logic out. But like in demo we showed that you could have a HTML view for the pages which are small, which don't have much scrolling. You could go ahead with a web view. And for others, you can replace even at a later point with a native view. That should handle your problem. So we'll just quickly move forward. And uh, can we take it uh, later? We are running out of time, so we just want to get across all the points that we had. And after the presentation, we'll be here only. So any of you who have any questions, you can get in touch with us. So like in this discussion, we already emphasized that you get best of both worlds. You have UI components, you have views. In your one single application, you could have some views which are HTML. You could have some views which are totally native. And you maybe can have a mix of both in the same view. Your HTML can be styled to match that of the native view. So users, as long as there is no performance lag, user might not even come to know the, that there is a different technology altogether working for a particular screen. You can also have widgets like date pickers, autocomplete. One thing we saw, alert. On web browser, it gave you the standard web browser alert. On Android, it showed you the standard Android alert, which was different from WebView, obviously. So you can mix all those things. And this is as per your requirement, as per your need. If for some reason you feel that this particular piece is not performing well because you are using HTML view or an HTML component, you can take out that particular piece, place it with the native component. And since you have the bridge, which is doing all the communication, the only place that you change is the bridge how the bridge on the native device handles that particular call. Moving ahead, where this brings us to. Initially, we talked about that there are certain benefits which we get using native app development. Then there are certain challenges also which we wanted to address. How are we, or how is this particular approach addressing these challenges? Since you are able to mix both HTML and native views, definitely you get the best user experience you can have. If your view is small enough, it can, a simple enough, it can very well be a HTML view. You, it's just about styling it so that the user doesn't notice it. And it's since embedded within a web view in your application, a web view is also a native component. So you get all the navigation bar, you get all the tab bars, everything. So for the user, it's a seamless experience. And also, there were certain challenges you sort of address most of those challenges to a great extent since you have common code. There is just one code in which you are developing all the features. There is just one core team which is working on developing those features. There definitely will be, like I mentioned earlier, will be need of certain folks to be ha having, say, some familiarity with native development because you still have to have that bridge. But that still doesn't mean that whatever you were able to do without knowing that you cannot do now. Maintainability and extensibility automatically gets taken care of. If you have a defect that is reported, let's say, on one particular device, there is a quite high likelihood that the same defect is on other devices as well, because it's the same code that is running. So you fix at one place, you get fixed, the bug fixed at both the places. And obviously, at this time, you can have relatively less number of people because there is a skill set that is sort of common. So you can do with probably a less number of developers with that. Now, 
the biggest thing about applicability. We have been talking about that this is applicable, this is a great approach, but does it apply as everywhere? It still doesn't. It is still not something which addresses all the problems that we might run into. One thing, if you are targeting, say, more than one platform. Another thing, the key thing, is when your application logic or the core logic that you are trying to extract out is meaty enough. In other case, say, if you are targeting maybe just one platform, or you are targeting two platforms, but your logic that you are trying to extract out doesn't have that much meat. Most of your logic resides in services. Maybe it won't make sense to follow this particular approach. So how do we cross this bridge? We have a framework called Kalatrava, which has recently been announced. This is from one of the architects in ThoughtWorks, Giles Alexander. This is an open source project as most of the projects that have come from ThoughtWorks are. This provides you basic underpinnings. It provides you a template for iOS application, a template for web, and a template for Android. The demo that we presented here was built on that. All you need to do is that just check this code out, just build it. There are steps which are mentioned over there, and you can get started. After that, it is up to you to decide where you can apply what problems you have faced in the past that this framework can address and how you can leverage the most benefit out of it. So after that, we had some plan for taking up questions, but I guess we have run out of time. So we'll be taking questions offline. But if you guys need to contact us, our contact details are here. And you should definitely check out Kalatrava. Thank you.